Hello and welcome to today's cryptocurrency technical analysis where we are going to be going over the Bitcoin chart and the very big move that we are seeing to the downside. I want to go over some very key levels of support and resistance and how we can, I suppose, psychologically and emotionally prepare for what's coming on the Bitcoin chart. So I hope that you do really enjoy this one. I'm going to try and keep it uh, educationally focused as well so you can uh, benefit in, in that regards as well as just knowing the levels to trade. Um, so yeah, let, let's get let's get into the video. Um First of all, I think it's fair. There's a few things that I want you to be aware of, I suppose. Okay. The first is, you know, you might be wondering why did we see such, you know, why did we move down here? Why did we break through $50,000? What could be some of the causes of this? Okay. I think the number one reason that I'm going to say personally is obviously we had that symmetrical triangle. Yeah. We had the symmetrical triangle on Bitcoin, uh, which looked obviously like this. We were looking at it from our line charts and we had the very, nice looking symmetrical triangle which we had here yeah so we had this symmetrical triangle going on where we were seeing a triangle form we lost that we got the back test on the bitcoin pair uh, before i moved to the downside we've obviously seen this as well on several different altcoins for example xrp well just basically a lot of the altcoins minus ethereum we're all inside of this uh, symmetrical triangle pattern so this could be a very uh, big reason in terms of technicals why we got another move to the downside and if we were reviewing this as an Elliott wave count we could say we had our wave one uh running flat coming down for free putting in this triangle in the fourth losing the triangle back testing another move to the downside okay so we have we have like technical reason here why price moved down but it was it was uncanny i suppose of how bitcoin moved down here the exact minute of the downturn was coinciding with the stock market turning down so this was what um uh about about yeah, it's having about seven o'clock yeah yesterday yeah and the stock market started to turn very much to the downside obviously we could say this was news related in some regards as well as just uh again a liquidation cascade but you know uh, America doing their policies. I, I'm not going to get into the politics on this video, but um, you know we all have our opinions on on that. But what we can all do, agree on is obviously that it spooked the market almost. You know, spooked the market. Talks of capital gains increasing. You know, for whatever reason, it spooked the market, and there became a lot of selling. Okay, people cashing out, people selling, closing their positions, closing their longs, entering shorts. A mixture of it all. Very big move to the downside on the stock market. Like I was saying over on Twitter that. You know, the, the, you know, the S&P 500s, you know, your big stock market indexes, they we can say that they are related, correlated to Bitcoin. So when we see these big moves on the stock market, that is affecting Bitcoin. And that is an undeniable correlation that we have seen now for many years. Yeah. Um, but well, specifically two years, <laughs> many years. I guess we can say that it's two years. OK, so when the stock market was pulling back heavily last night, we could be somewhat saying bitcoin is more likely to be pulling back as well because of the correlation between the two markets okay so this was something in my opinion to be aware of in terms of uh we could say just news-based fundamentals and obviously on the technicals what we focus on we had the symmetrical triangle which did break to the downside got a pretty you know got a back test and another move down okay so that, that kind of clears up a little bit, I hope, why we saw the move to the downside. Because, you know, there's so many people that, you know, bring out these sort of comments of Bitcoin can never go to this level. Bitcoin is never going to break this support. La, 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 la. At the end of the day, uh, I, I, what am I going <laughs> to... You know, obviously you cannot trade on the titles of videos. That would be a very bad idea. I'm probably going to call this video, like, why Bitcoin can go to, I don't know, like $32,000. Because the thing is, Bitcoin absolutely can. It can go low in that. So the arguments that you see people, you know, come up with, with like, oh, Bitcoin can never go down this low. The institutions are going to buy it up. Um, you know, they're just not really valid arguments, in my opinion. Like, there is obviously support levels down to, you know, levels such. And you know, I personally do think 32K is a nice support. Um, do, do we have to hit there? Of course we don't. But do you think 32,000 is a really nice support? Obviously, we have sub levels on the way there. And we're currently bouncing off of one being $48,000, $48,000 was a really important level that we're aware of, okay, you have $40, $48,000, your next one below you was obviously that $47,000, and then you look, have $45,000, so you have like these sub levels on the way down, and in my opinion, we're putting in some, uh, you know, I, I believe we've finished wave three, and we're going to be working on our wave four now, so this, this is going to be taking quite a while, um, so I don't think you need to like rush into anything, this wave four is going to be lasting a few months, so, 
yeah, I wouldn't be like thinking, oh my God, I need to rush into a decision. We've just seen a massive move, you know, but over the last you know week or so, we've seen a 25% move to the downsides. It's not really the time to start panic selling now. You know, you're pretty, you know, it's just kind of, uh, I would just, let's just call it a questionable decision to be shorting right now when we're literally reaching some support levels. So, um, yeah, that, that, that's my opinion. I, I personally wouldn't like short here, but, um, you know, that, that's just my view. You can obviously do what you want. <laughs> um, so yeah, but basically I wanted to, I wanted to do this a little bit different. I wanted to talk you through rather than like talking you through the short that I have, which everybody kind of knows about on that swing trade. I want to talk you through a few of the losing trades that I've taken over the past 24 hours, specifically one. Okay. And you know, I get a lot of, uh, like requests of people like, can you talk us through a losing trade? And, and the, the truth is the you know, I'm just not really taking much losses or well, the losses that I am taking. I'm getting out of quite a lot of trades at break even or very minuscule losses. And they're not, not, not really worth hardly even mentioning. But I have a really nice one to talk you through here, um, which happened last night. OK, and this was based off of I wanted to long the daily. OK, I wanted to long the daily, which was a, which was around the region of fifty one thousand dollars. Yeah, we had the CC, we had the daily, we had a large term time frame three, eight, two. Uh, we just had, you know, three plus reasons to long that $51,000. Yeah. So naturally I did. Okay. Obviously we can see now that trade has obviously got stopped out and it ended in a, ended in a losing trade. Um, few things to bear in mind on this trade, as I'm talking you through it is when we obviously hit the support and this, this low actually was put in right literally onto the CC. We did get a bounce of about three, 3.28%. So that in its first instance is, is a substantial bounce where one would imagine that you're taking profits. Okay. On a, on a 3% bounce to the upside, uh, when you're in this downtrend, one imagines you hit a take profit one. I personally did, but th th let's just run on the example that I haven't hit a take profit one. Okay. Well, what, what, you have to be thinking to yourself, if you're longing these sort of levels, okay, such as 51K, when you have to remember what's happening, we've broken out of the symmetrical triangles, uh, we're still in a downtrend now for the past few weeks, obviously, for me, that may, you, you, if you pay attention, I just hope that you can still remember, I gave you that really important Fibonacci time pivot on the 16th of April 2021, and isn't it quite amazing how that really did coincide with almost the top and big change in market structure at least we could say that that was pivot really was the high for wave three uh pretty amazing when you think about it but anyway going back to this example um let's say you longed fifty one thousand dollars. you know th this region of the daily was nice support okay and you have to think to yourself at the time you even got a really nice entry and it got a bounce you know you got yourself impossible to say you didn't like you would have got yourself into profits during that move because the bounce was pretty strong off the daily well, pretty strong, quote unquote, you know, 3% bounce. Then let's just say you hit, hadn't hit any take profits and you were expecting a full reversal to the upside. Okay. Well, when you kind of come back down below that level, then let's say, I don't know, let's just give a few examples. Let's say you longed the daily, which was around here. You were looking, let's say, for a full reversal to the upside and your, and your stop loss is maybe back below the wick. Okay. So you have to say to yourself, uh, you know, are you still in this position? Because people get into these positions where they expect, where they have really massive high expectations and then they end up bag holding their trade for way too long. Okay, so let's say you also longed the daily, which was around 51k. Okay, you get a pretty nice bounce to the upside, but you don't take any profits. Okay, here we come back down below the level. So here you've already broken now through through the levels, but you've come back above. You might be thinking, oh, okay, I'll still hold on to this position as... You know, we might have had a swing failure pattern of it. Okay, fair enough. I can kind of accept this. But now when you've lost that level totally and you've got a full back test of support flipping into resistance here, you, know, you see this really clearly support off of uh, your CC. Okay, secondary bounce off of it, even weak, continuing the lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. If you go on a five minute time frame, it's easier to see. Yeah, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. If for whatever reason you still want to be holding on to that long right now, then you have to say to yourself that this is the point of, you know, you got to be saying this is the point to get out that long. Yeah, get out along, look for short positions. It's no longer this, you know, if, if you're still in the long at that point from trading the daily, you can just see how you're massively trading off of the bias. You're, you're trading off of what you want or what you believe rather than what the chart is telling you. OK, so I personally did take the long off of $51,000 uh, region. Yeah, this was 
Again, I've just mentioned the, the, the confluences that we had there. Obviously, that long got stopped out. I, I did hit a stop loss on that trade. Okay, for me, it wasn't the end of the world. Okay, it really, really wasn't the end of the world. Uh, but the, the, what I'm trying to bring you here educationally is, yes, you can look for these longs. Yeah, you can look for these longs at areas of support. And I personally, I personally took a long off of around forty-eight thousand dollars this morning. I have closed this one. But the thing is that we have to remember is we really difficult to, to to make this very clear we are in a higher term time frame downtrend yeah we are in a higher term time frame downtrend in terms of we're talking about medium term time frame you, and this is why trading can be somewhat confusing because you can be in like a five minute uptrend a four hour downtrend and a weekly uptrend so each time frame you're referring to is different trends so you can be taking longs on the five minute chart while looking for your shorts on the four hour chart, while still looking for a, a long off the weekly chart. So I, I, I can comprehend how this can be confusing, especially, um, especially I suppose if you're like a new person and you come to my videos where I'm like day trading, swing trade, I like, I will do it all. I, I will happily trade every, every time frame of the market in, in any direction, you know? So I, I can comprehend how it can be somewhat confusing, uh, especially for a newer person. I, I don't think it's confusing when you kind of have a good grasp of things. But one thing that I think is really important here is if you're looking for these longs, such as fifty-three thousand dollars, I think was an acceptable long, and really that fifty-one thousand for the just above fifty-one thousand three hundred was a very nice long for the daily. But what you have to remember is there's a few ways that you can counteract uh, looking for the longs here. Firstly, holding on to swing shorts. Why would you hold on to a swing short while looking for a long off of the fifty-one k region? Well, it's kind of like. This is nothing new per se, but this is like how my style of trading is. So as you all know, like to bring it, you know, to, to emphasize how I'm trading this, I'm still in those swing short positions. And this is primarily for a few reasons. Firstly, if you just know how I trade, you know that I love to hold my short positions. And secondly, it gives me more confidence or confidence per se to look for these longs. For instance, here you see our longs 47,800. Again, I've, I've closed out this one at 48,500, but you you are given then this is uh in in, in layman's about a 1.5 percent bounce obviously when you're on cross it looks it looks like more but this is just a 1.5 percent bounce you get in you get out okay so you're able to sculpt these long positions having the back up of a swing short for me is very 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 helpful psychologically and just emotionally i'm just able to manage my trades i just feel in complete control you know, I just feel in complete control, even though even in this range, you have to remember in this inside of this range, which lasted a total of about four days now. Yeah, just over four days. I, I must have taken inside of this range about 50 trades, OK, 50 trades long and short. Obviously, I'm taking a lot of longs in here. I'm taking a lot of shorts in here. I'm, I'm, ha I'm happy to trade both sides of the market. For a scope trader, you have to be happy to trade longs and shorts. For a day trader, you also have to be happy to trade longs and shorts. And what you really have inside of that range was three different longs off of 53K, two shorts off of 57K, okay? But then within that, you obviously have many, many scope trades off of your sub-levels, okay? And I'm not going to go into all those sub-levels in this video, but you have your overall 57 to 53K range. As we know, we lost... 53k and you come down to your daily so you can be longing 53k take a loss on 53k as you come down to the day you can take another long there that is going to have ended in another loss so by having these sort of swing shorts as like backup i suppose or just you know it's going to be hedging your hedging your bets when you're taking the longs uh, in my opinion this is how i can happily take these longs and uh just like, just like this one, I will happily take these longs. I generally like to get in my take profits fairly quickly. And I know this isn't everybody's style of trading, but this is just kind of how I do it. <laughs> um, I hope I haven't made this video really confusing. I actually wanted to try and keep this video <laughs> not confusing. I have a feeling I'm going to be confusing. It's just, I know it's not very beginner friendly what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, I wanted to talk you through that trade because a lot of people are just always like, Show us some losses. And, and the truth is, I just never have really, I never have massive losses. Like people are, are thinking I'm going to get like wrecked or something. But, you know, my losses are, because my trades are always really well planned, I'm never just going to be randomly longing or randomly shorting. And you're never going to see me shorting here because I'm never looking for shorts after such a move to the downside. Like I will only look for my shorts on the rises. 
For example, when we were rising here on the 16th, going into the 16th, what did we have? Well, if you remember correctly, we were going right up into that CC, yeah? So you have to remember that this was, you know, I did I did take that short off of 63K. And that was we were rising into the CC. The next short that I'm in as well is off of 57K. Why? Because we were rising to the top of the range. Also, obviously, I did long the lower the range at 53K, but that has been stopped out, okay? Uh, that, that one was, again, not a... A massive loss because I'd hit my take profit one on the trade and I'm out of it rep break even. But that that secondary long that I longed off of fifty one thousand dollars, yeah, we're just gonna say that was a that was a losing trade, yeah, losing trades. This it shouldn't be some sort of like oh my god, you don't want to make these like big things of losing trades. Like I want to say like losing a trade is normal, and just because I am not losing so many trades or, or my losses, I I feel are negligible <laughs> oh man i can't speak like my losses are so small it's i feel it's hardly worth like um you know giving a discussion about per se but at the end of the day you have to remember i am taking losses it's not like i'm immune to taking losses what you have to remember is i will class myself as only taking really high probability trades what does that mean it means we're taking less losses and the losses that we do take are easily defined in validations so that the, the stop loss on the trade is is very easily defined OK, and it means that we're not trading these biases of like, you know, the argument that I get given. You remember when I when I didn't long 51K a few weeks back, didn't didn't long 51K. I uh, didn't long this low of wave four. I oh, man, the amount of people that were like, oh, my God, you are such a fool for not longing here. Of course, we were not going to break fifty thousand dollars. La, 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 la. It's like these sort of people that live in cloud cuckoo land, which they just believe like this. These things are never going to happen. Well, they're going to get absolutely like. They're just going to lose a lot of money in trading because you have to acknowledge in trading. Literally anything can happen. So when I say Bitcoin can go to 32K, if you, you come to the argument of, oh, that can't happen. I'm just going to I'm just going to totally ignore your opinion because as a trader, I acknowledge anything can happen. Yeah. So the, 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 the argument, the counter argument of, oh, that's impossible is just. It's just. You know, this is an argument that a low IQ person gives, whereas a, whereas a clever person is going to present a counter argument. OK, and I'm all up for debates. You know, if you, you provide me an argument of saying, uh, you know, we're not going to breach fifty thousand dollars because of this level of support, this amount, you know, and you give me a list of reasons. You know, I'm going to acknowledge that I'm going to read it and I'm going to appreciate and, I'm, you know, I'll give you a I'll give you a respected answer of, of why I believe it will be broken. But, you know, the people that just comment like, oh, this is never going to happen. It's like. OK, your, your opinion is totally you're in a, you're entitled to your opinion, but it's so irrelevant for me. I, don't, I honestly don't care. Um, anyway, again, I'm, I'm rambling. 17 minute video. You know, I start talking and I find it really hard to stop when it's when it's about Bitcoin. I just <laughs> I, I, I can just talk about Bitcoin for hours and hours and hours and hours. I, I love it. What can I say? I absolutely love trading. I really, really, really wanted to offer you some value in this video of you know, we've briefly gone through the levels. Let's not lie. We've, I've briefly gone through the technical analysis. I'm, I'm planning to do a live stream tonight, probably in about, uh, I don't know, nine hours ish. I'll do a live stream tonight um, where we'll go more in depth on the levels. This video here, I just really wanted to do a video today during the day and uh, I'll do another live stream in the night more in depth on the analysis. I think this video here was more designed firstly to just, you know, briefly talk you through the levels of support. But more so designed to really be focusing on the need of having that plan, okay? need of knowing, you know, your, where you want to interact with the market, where you want to get in, where you want to get out. And if you, if, you know, if you find yourself this morning, like waking up with cold sweats, waking up, you know, uh, frustrated, waking up, oh my God, I'm underwater, I'm liquidated, you know, you've clearly taken that original entry of no plan. So, you know, if you have to think to yourself this morning, where am I going to long? Where am I going to short? You've already lost. I've said this before. You know, if, if you are entering the market this morning and you are having to write a comment down below saying, when should I long or when should I short? You're going to lose your trade before you've even entered it. Yeah. And I've said this before, like the, the, the trade that you're taking is already won or lost before you've even entered it. And that's because if you have no plan when you're entering your trade, you have no idea where you're going to exit it. You have no idea where your invalidation is. You're just totally gambling and you've, you, you've lost the trade before it's even started. You know, Whereas if you approach this market, knowing your levels of support, knowing the difference of time framing. Yeah. So you have to really understand the difference of time framing in the market. Otherwise, I also feel you're going to lose. Um, and if you can start to understand the, the, the technicals behind these moves, 
okay starting to understand the correlations between the stock market again that was posted nearly uh you know that was posted last night at 7 p.m we're now at 10 30 the next day like recognizing these things that you can start to understand of why you might be more inclined to hold on to swing short positions okay um you know you start to form these symmetrical triangles of course like i'm saying here they, they can break in either direction it's not like it has to break down but when we talk in terms of probabilities symmetrical triangles generally are breaking to the downside more often than they're not you could you pair this with the stock market breaking down you sort of pair this with you know uh, large liquidity below 50k you know you have to acknowledge you know you, know, you can definitely acknowledge it is likely to break fifty thousand dollars in my opinion and this is this is why over the last few days i've been saying i'm i'm not closing my swing short i've, I've made this very 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 clear like i'm not going to close that swing short until we get a real reclaim of resistance and support you know i mean i can say this is a this has been a good idea it's been a pretty you know been a good idea and i and i also don't want to just be like talking about that because i, de I don't want to throw it in people's faces but i think what i wanted to do is i really want to emphasize yes i lost this trade at fifty one thousand dollars. you know i lost that trade at 51k but the thing is it's not like this massively oh my god it, you know you have to just think everybody's going to lose the trades okay you're not going to get 100 percent win rates and while i was, gave this lovely quote here yeah uh i loved i loved it uh, this is not my quote, but our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to succeed is always to just try one more time. It does not matter how slowly you go as long as you do not stop. And as Nelson Mandela says, I never lose. I either win or learn. You know, so if you're waking up this morning, for example, saying, oh, I give up. I'm not good for, at this. I you know I cannot trade. You know, this is a loser's mentality. Yeah. You, you, you have in life winners and you have losers. And a loser is the guy that comes to the market today and says, I give up. Yeah. Whereas a champion would approach this market in one of two ways. Firstly, happy for the move down because they're in shorts. If they were in longs, viewing this as an amazing opportunity. Yeah, I, viewed, I personally think this is an amazing opportunity. And... You know, your, your, your third type of winner, I suppose, is just calm and collected. They're not they're not emotional. They're not scared. They're just, you know, reviewing their technical analysis, maybe reviewing what's happening on the charts. Where's the next long? Where's the next short? You know, making a making a plan, per se. Um, you know, this this is the this is what you want to be doing now. I wouldn't be like waking up this morning, like opening shorts and panic selling. Yeah, that's definitely not something I would do. I, I just wouldn't short here. Uh, even if we go down to like 32K, I, I, I would never short here because... <laughs> just i would just personally i just have no strategy to involve again this is for swing trades of course but i just have no swing trade strategy where i would short after a 25 percent move down it's just I, I just could not enter a new short here and this is why remaining my shorts from higher basically but yeah i'm really 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 sorry that i've rambled on so much i i, I hope i've offered some value in this video um i really do because i hate I absolutely really dislike it when I do the long videos <laughs> for myself and also for the viewers watching. I kind of feel uh, annoyed when I do the videos that's so long because time is precious at the end of the day. No, time is the most important commodity in the world. So I'm sorry for taking up so much time. I do hopefully I've offered you some value in terms of talking about, you know, uh, losing trade that I took here, why I took that trade, how I managed to get out of it with, a, with a, let's just say, a small loss in the end, to be honest with you. A fairly easy invalidation, though. As soon as we lose the level, we even get a back test of the level. Um, now, you know, we're aware of some levels to the downside. Obviously, we can clearly say 53K, really important level of resistance. If the walls can reclaim that, it's going to look pretty good on the short term. Um, whew. Yeah, and I'll give you a I'll give you a live stream tonight where we'll go more in depth on the technical analysis. This one was a little bit technical analysis, more focused on the uh, psychology. It's a little bit more important this morning, I feel. So I hope that's been helpful. Again, if you want to give us a follow over on Twitter, we are over there again now. Um, and... Uh, Yes, I hope you've enjoyed. Thank you ever so much. Have a brilliant day and I'll catch you tonight in the live stream. Thank you and goodbye. Cheers. Oh, no, 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 no. Before I end, trade illegal. I was just about to click end. I don't want to I don't want to render this video. So the, the legal trade disclaimer, of course, no financial advice in this video. None of the video had financial advice uh, doing this. Make sure you understand that. And with that said, if I don't catch you again, good afternoon, good morning and good night. Cheers. <laughs>